Hey guys, I hope you had a banging day. Uh, absolute banging. Um, we're just going to get right into this video. And today we've got who I think has been team of the year in SPFL only. Now if you want more of this, um, like, subscribe. I'm going to try and be posting every day or at least every other day. So stay tuned. Um, I'll need content ideas, so if any of you want that, I'll put this up on my TikTok once again. If you love football, you should really be following because I really love football too. And uh, I'd say I know quite a bit. Anyway, let's get back into this video. And the formation is a 4 3 3 because it's the most basic, so it makes sense for a team of the year. Right, let's get into this. <laughs> like my intro anyway so as you know i love this keeper right and you're wrong thinking marciano you're wrong there's only one keeper who deserves this spot not al mcgregor there's only one and that man is benjamin seagrest best player for dundee united just behind foot, no, just above Fuchs. Fuchs has been fabulous as well, but Seagrest is different. God, how is he stuck at Tanadice? <laughs> Unbelievable. I think he's brilliant. I think he could be Alvin McGregor's replacement. I think he could be Offier Marshall's replacement, and I think he could easily be Celtic next keeper. Same with Offier Marciano. He could walk into any of the Glasgow teams. When now McGregor retires because you're getting really old. Um, left back, right back. Let's go left back. Now, no biased. I've been very unbiased this game, this um video. And I've put in Josh Doig. Now, he's been phenomenal. He's got energy. Um, not complacent. He's he's always chasing the ball down. That's how he scored v Livingston. If you watched the game, um, I was I. He played brilliant, he won the ball back, and that was how he scored. And I just, he's so young, he can pass, he can have a shot, he can have a dribble. No, uh, I know he's playing left mid, but he, um, I just thought he could fit in left back. And no defender wants to come up against this man just now. No defender. No one. Not even whatever you call Michael Smith, Mr. Consistent. No, I'm joking, he is quite a good player. But Doig is playing really well. And there's all this Aaron Hickey's well better. I'm not saying Josh Doig is better, but they're both young. And Scotland have got a bright future. Tierney's young, Doig is young, Hickey's young. Um, Nathan Patterson young so I'm looking forward to this anyway I'll tell you the centre back pairing I've went for Ayer and Gordon now Ayer he's been the light of the Celtic team without him oh, Duffy and Julian at the back is giving me nightmares Celtic overrated Julian and Elianusi so much to me I don't un Elianusi, is ca Elianusi and Ayeti have came in the week thinking they're better than the rest and they've found it more difficult clearly and I just think Ayers just f been fantastic this season. Fantastic in the Celtic team. Uh, I think he really showed that he can be good in a bad team. There's no there's no better player this season than Christopher Ayer. And if he doesn't get player of the year for Celtic, I'm questioning my life. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if in the summer a, a relegation battle team um, sign this guy. Um, Burnley? That's a shout. Uh, I don't know if they'll even be able to afford the guy. Um, we, um, West Brom, if they stay up somehow. Fulham. Um, Newcastle. I can see him moving. I do not see him staying at Celtic for another season. You know that. Anyway, Gordon. You might have thought of Goldson, Hollander. I was trying to make the video more interesting than old form, like usual. I've been trying to find, you know, the diamond in the rough. Um, Gordon, really good attackingly in the box. He's a very good aerial threat. He can deal with it aerially. Um, he's brilliant at tracking back. He goes up, he attacks, and then he's back. He's very p pacey. He, he can put in a last-ditch tackle. Yeah, he's very good at that tackling. Um, yeah, 
played really well and I think without the, him, St John's, without Kerr, Jason Kerr and Gordon, it was hard to pick between them, St Johnston wouldn't be in the top six, defensively at least. Xander Clark has been woeful this season. Don't know who's watching that man, but it isn't me. He's been rubbish. Um, n now right back. Then I went for an interesting choice, and I went for Richard Tate. Now since he's moved from Motherwell, we've kept an eye on him. And I thought it was a good signing, and I thought him and Marco Fraser's been really good for St Mirren. They've been consistent. They've been the most consistent players on the pitch for them the whole season. More consistent than Jamie McGrath. And I say that with confidence. Every week, he's playing passes. He's, oh, he, he can play centre mid. He can play right mid. He can play right back. He can play centre back. He's so versatile as well. And I love to see that in a player who can play anywhere. It means you're a good player. Um, yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, he's good attackingly when he goes up. He doesn't go up... Uh, as much when he's obviously centre back and right back, but when he's right mid and centre mid, which can happen occasionally with St Mid and having a lot of COVID problems, he was good. He has a shot on him, he has a cross on him, and he has a through pass on him. So if he's playing right mid, teams be scared. Now, centre mid, I'd say people are going to be interested in my choice, but I'd say I quite like my choice. Um, my first centre mid is another St Johnston player. And it's Ali McCann, 21 maybe, very young, very positive on the ball. You'll never see him go back. Uh, oh, he'll have a shot if he has no options. He'll find a pass if he has the option. He'll dribble up players. He's not scared. He is not scared. And that is the biggest threat to any team playing St Johnston. Him and David Witherspoon attackingly be scared because they dominate the park. That's... The four players who have contributed this season for St Johnston, Jason Kerr, Gordon, McCann and Motherspoon, they've been incredible, they've been off the mark this season for them. And honestly, I, I can't see McCann staying for another season, Gordon's very young still, uh, just coming into his prime nearly, so it'll be perfect for him having such a standout season. Uh, I could see him maybe getting a Celtic move if Celtic rebuilding their team maybe. Uh, McCann, he could be a promise that Stephen Davies wants to stay for another season but he can't play 90 minutes so McCann could be an option for them. Not even that. Hibs are Hibs are just finished third. They'll have money coming in if they get in Europe as well. Uh, Kevin Nisbet and Ryan Porteous are definitely going to leave. Hearts are coming up with a lot of money. Aberdeen are having a rebuild. So for young players, this is a real chance with all clubs rebuilding. You'll have Hearts, Aberdeen, um, Celtic rebuilding. You'll have Hibs pumping in the money once again, try to get players. You'll have Rangers quality in your squad, their squad, selling players, getting even better for cheaper. you see it in this Dundee United, St Johnston, St Mirren. I'm so buzzing for next season. I could go for pot for some teams. I could go really well, and I really hope the Hibs won't go to pot. <laughs> um, anyway, other centre mid. I've got a bombshell in the other one, so we'll go for the easy one. Glenn Camaro. Joe Aribo's been fantastic, but I thought he's been more attacking than I think. Glenn Camaro gets respected, but not as not not as much as Stephen Davies and Joe Aribo for me. He does a lot defensively as well, and um, he's just. He's there, he stops the through passes, he reads the players attackingly and defensively. He knows how to go forward and play it to Aribo, play it to Kemp, play it to Hadri, open up the spaces. You know, when, when clubs used to sit defensive against them at the start of the season, Kamara would be that guy to pluck that pass, see the gap. And I, I like him personally. I don't know about using um, Glenn Kamara. Definitely not seeing this, but the Rangers fans and Scottish fans who are watching this, I don't like all the protests, but I stand with Kamara. Um, absolutely. Uh, definitely. Slavia Prague deserved to be booed out of that. And anyway, we'll leave it at that. That's a whole new whole new video, which I'm not doing because I don't like going into that stuff. Um, Centre mid. Here we go. Put it in the comments before you think if you can. Pause it. I'll give you a couple seconds. Five. One right, centre mid is Christian Fuchs. Whoa, what a player! If Hibs ever sell 
Gorgich get to him in. He's a brick house. Have you seen the man? He can attack somehow with his physicality. It's unbelievable. He's so big different. And so, like, not fat, but like strong and so like muscly. But he can still, he defends like a boss. Mate, I'm not going to lie, the worst thing about Dundee United is their fullbacks. Their fullbacks are shocking. And Christian Fuchs always intercepts their fullbacks. Um, I'll just, he can he can drive the ball as well. And he has a good drill shot on him. Against Dun against Celtic in the 0-0, no -no, he was fantastic. Him and Benjamin Segres were the best players on the park. Honestly, what a, what a performance from them two. Um, Nicky Clark as well, he had a good game. Um, we'll start with the right wing. Um, there's only one man for me. And once again, I'm not trying to be biased, but Martin Boyle, he's had a fantastic season. And I believe he's got good end product. The man takes his chances. If Chris Cadden took his chances, I probably would have put him in there instead. But Boyle takes his chances and he gets assists and he, oh, he's, he scored a few peaches. Uh, sadly, striker. I couldn't add Nisbet for his recent form, obviously. He's fell off. You can't add him. I can't add Christian Deutsch and I don't need to get into that. Sell him, please, Hibs. Sell him, please. I'll just go over this in a quick minute, 30 seconds, right? My thing with Christian Deutsch is we don't need him anymore. We play 3-5-2. We've got the players to pass now with um, the money we've got and the players we've got. We've got the ability to pass it out of Paul McGinn. And he can pass it out to Josh Doy, yeah, Chris Cadden, and they both players can drive. And even if we find Jackson Irvin, Jackson Irvin most of the time will play a nice pass that will send us forward. Um, Gogic not exactly. Gogic will probably just play it back. But we don't really pass it to him in an attacking situation, do we? Um... Left wing, I'll leave it for the big reveal striker. Uh, left wing, there's only one man, David Wotherspoon. Well, there's not. I had two men on the list, and to Hearts fans' enjoyment, I, I put Tony Watt. Tony Watt's really drove this Motherwell side to points, but Wotherspoon's been fantastic this season. He's created chances that I didn't even know he was good enough to create. He's put St Johnston in a place that I didn't even know St Johnston were good enough to go to. Um, and when you watch him against clubs, his skills. He doesn't have pace, but he can just run past players. I don't understand it. Um, I do like Wotherspoon. He used to play for Hibs, and I wouldn't mind taking him back. I don't think we need him now, but when we had Neil Lennon and Paul Heckenbottom, I definitely would have taken him. Um, so, yeah, just... But I'd throw that name out there. Anyway, we've got a three-way with it. Two-way, actually, with strikers. Um, Bruce Anderson, unknown from Aberdeen at Hamilton, and Nicky Clark or Ollie Shaw. So that's a three-way. Ollie Shaw has been... I'll tell you why I think every one of them. Ollie Shaw has been fantastic for Ross County since John Hughes has came in. He's really... Him and Jermaine Hilton have really fit into this team perfectly. Same with Jason Naismith. And they two fit, and they three fit the formation and tactics perfectly. With Jermaine Hilton running in the wing and centre, and Luke Shaw, get Ollie Shaw, sorry, Ollie Shaw getting the goal. And he's been fantastic. He's been clinical when Ross County have needed it the most. So I think he's been really good. Um, Bruce Anderson, he's injected life into this Hamilton team. Obviously Hamilton, um, not not obviously doing the best as always, uh, fighting to stay up once a game. And Bruce Anderson's made a massive effect on getting points in them with signing in January. I think he's kind of injected life into them and he's been fantastic. He's hit the ground running and he's done fabulous. Nicky Clark, Dundee United... Are a very physical team. They're a very not beautiful football team. And Nicky Clark fits that system perfectly and he's done really well getting the goals when they need them. Uh, even when he plays in centre mid, he wows me of how good he is. Um, his passes with Giando Fuchs, Ian Hark, Sporro, um, and him and Lorik Shankland get one cup play. He's the best player in that. Uh, um, he's one of the best players in that team 
that's for sure. Uh, Warren Shanklin just came in, and it was all Kevin Nisbet v Warren Shanklin, and it's clear to see there was only one winner in that one. Uh, but if I had to choose a striker, uh, I'd choose Bruce Anderson for the effect he's made. If I had to go over the whole season, I'd go Ollie Shaw, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to go Bruce Anderson. You guys, you can tell me the whole team, you can tell me what you change. Um, really, there was some maybe Glasgow or Edinburgh players, who, well obviously not Hearts because they're in the championship, and I didn't mean that as a thingy by the way, um, but there were some other players from big clubs who could have went in. But I wanted to mix up, I wanted to get some small clubs in there, and sorry if I didn't get your club. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, make sure to link and like and subscribe, and turn notice on so you never miss a video, be posting every day. And I've got a good idea for tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one.